It's game week, and Coach Fisher hasn't named the starters yet. So I will today, right here on Locked on Aggies. You are Locked on Aggies, your daily podcast on the Texas A&M Aggies. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome on in the Locked On Aggies. I'm your host, Andrew Stefaniak. Thanks for making Locked On Aggies your first listen every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account and use Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. That's promo code Locked On College. It's Monday morning, Monday afternoon, whenever you're watching this. I get it. It's Monday. No one's excited about it. But it is game week. Ladies and gentlemen, we have been waiting to get here for such a long time and through all the pain and the waking up. And looking at the calendar, knowing we're two months away from football, it is no more. The Aggies have a football game on Saturday, and I am absolutely stoked. Coach Fisher hasn't named the starters yet. Now, listen, some schools do this. Some schools don't. Some schools give media a depth chart, you know, the game week, maybe a couple days before. Some schools don't. Coach Fisher obviously comes off as a coach that isn't going to generally give that out. So I expect we're going to find out. The starters, when they jog out there against New Mexico. But I'm going to tell you who I think is going to start. Every position, offense, defense, and, of course, special teams. And then we've got some interesting news about this week and what this week is going to look like with it being game week. So let's get straight into it. Quarterback, starter, Connor Wigman. I am a little surprised. We talked about this with our buddy, a friend of the show, Jay Arnold, who was on Friday's episode of Locked on Aggies. You know, him and I discussed, I'm a little surprised. Now, most schools do that. If it is a defined quarterback battle, they name a starter. I'm a little surprised we still haven't seen a, a graphic on Texas A&M football's Twitter saying um, starting quarterback, Connor Brigman. I'm a little shocked by that. But beside the point, Connor Brigman's a starter. Max Johnson will back him up. The running back room, this is where we start to get a little interesting. I've talked about it. I think that Amari Daniels and Le'Veon Moss are kind of 1A and 1B right now, with your actual B being Reuben Owens and then your C slash short yardage guy being David Bailey. So I've talked about how I think that Ruben Owens is going to take over this position sooner than later. Still believe that. I still I, is that going to be week one? I don't think so. I think that you're going to see Amari Daniels and Le'Veon Moss go out there early. Now, one of them has to be a starter, and I'm going to go Amari Daniels. But I think they're going to be a one A one B in this game against New Mexico, and then Ruben Owens is still going to get carries. That's one thing we've talked about all the time here on Locked On Aggies. All you everydayers know this, but all these guys are going to get work. I think you're going to see all four of these running backs get a handful of carries each game. David Bailey is going to get the least of all of them, but I still think you, you could see him getting some short yardage stuff. So, you know, um, so yeah, Amari Daniels, I'll, I'll list him as the starter. And then I think you're going to see Le'Veon Moss come in and you're going to see Ruben Owens come in, but all these guys are going to get carries against New Mexico. And then you're going to see some guys, I think below the four guys I listed, just because, you know, it's, it's going to be a blowout and you, you assume that you're going to let everybody get in the little playing time. So that is the running back room. Everybody's going to eat thanks to the wonderful way Coach Petrino likes to run his offense. Everybody's going to eat. I love that. The wide receiver room, another one that I i don't think this one's too interesting. You got uh, Nia Smith, Noah Thomas, Evan Stewart are your guys. And then you got some guys that, you know, who's going to play? Is it going to be freshman Micah Teaser, Ray Cottrell? Is, um, you know, obviously, and you got Moose. I meant to mention that. Obviously, Moose is going to play a lot of snaps for the Aggies this season. You're going to see him in the football games a ton great player he is unfortunately hurt by the fact that there are so many talented football players i mean so many talented wide receivers in this room that i mean moose is a starter i think at a handful more than a handful of sec schools and because of the depth and talent of this room he's not going to be a starter he's still going to play relevant snaps and there's obviously going to be you know he's going to be in the game a ton every single game 
but it's it, it's it's a compliment to this football team how good of a player he is and you know we don't we're not going to see him run out with the starters so um and then another guy Jade Walker the transfer from um oh gosh what was that Grand Valley State you know he he's a player all i've seen is positive stuff now i know a lot that we've seen from him is the circus catches in a great place he's a big bigger guy 6'4" Uh, bouncy can can jump out of the gym kind of guy, but you know how much of that is practical to the football field. Obviously, winning 50 50 balls is, but uh, what I'm saying is a lot that we've seen from him is you know highlight real plays. But it's we've still heard a lot of positive things. I think he could be a guy that could get a couple snaps, and he was not in the conversation for me before fall camp. So I've been impressed with him. Every everything I've heard and seen, I think you could. I mean, like I said, I mean, he's not gonna. I think he could get a couple snaps to use his abilities to help the Aggies. We could see that happen. That's the wide receiver room. Once again, I think, you know, we'll, we'll get a better – I feel good about the starters. The question is the depth pieces. Who's going to – you know, you, injuries happen, stuff happens. Coach Fisher's been very open with how good – how impressed he's been with, with Raymond Cottrell and Micah Tease. These two true freshmen have looked great. He said himself he's not, like – by any means scared to throw them out there. So, you know, I think that, um, I think that it, it, the Texas A&M wide receiver room is in a position to succeed this season. And I'm really excited about that. The tight end room is an it's an interesting one because of the obvious injury to Donovan green, you know, Max, Wright. We've talked about, I talked about, you know, when Donovan green went down with the injury, my outlook on Max Wright didn't change much. He's going to catch some passes, but we know what he's there to do. He's there to help in the blocking game. Donovan Green wasn't the best blocker, which is why the Max Wright-Donovan Green one-two punch was perfect because Max Wright can block, Donovan Green can catch and run. I, um, Green goes down, unfortunately, as we all know. And so now the question is, where do we go from there? I think Jake Johnson is the starting like pass-catching tight end. And I think obviously, so like this is one where I'd almost say you have to name two starters. Like I think that you're going to see um, a lot of that, a lot of you know sets like that. But I also feel pretty confident saying that Max Wright's going to be out there a lot to block, and Jake Johnson's going to be out there a lot to catch passes for the Aggies. I've heard a lot of good things about Theo, though it was hard to not say. You know, you could almost go Theo one A one B with Jake, but. I still think Jake, it, it's it's his position after Donovan Green went down with the injury. So I'm leaning Jake Johnson there, but obviously Max Wright is going to be in there doing his thing. We're going to see um, all these guys. Jaden Platts had a good fall. I could see him coming in and playing some snaps for the Aggies this season. So I mean, I, you know, I feel pretty confident in that tight end room is going to be okay. You hate losing Green, hate it for that young man. I hope he's feeling better. Um, but you know, at the end of the day. Uh, you got to find somebody to fill the role. And I think that Texas A&M has a couple of tight ends who are going to be just fine after losing Donovan Green. Obviously, you lose a player who's going to help a lot this year, but this tight end room is going to be just fine with thanks to the talent you have in the room. The offensive line. My starters haven't changed, but I do think that some of the leashes got shorter on some of these players. I think that some of these guys, you know, at the guard position, you got some talented players. At the tackle position, you got some talented guys in the two deep to where if somebody doesn't play well, could you see a, a, a Chase Basantis come in and get snaps? Could you see a Mark Naboo come in and get snaps? You could see it, but I, from when I took over here at Locked on Aggies to now, my offensive line has stayed the same as it is today. Left to right, Trey Zune, Cam Dewberry, Bryce Foster, Layden Robinson, and Ruben Fothery. Uh, Fothery, it sounds like he's good to go. Bryce Foster was, of course, he was a little banged up, but it sounds like he's good to go. That'll be a big storyline this week is, is he healthy enough to play this week against New Mexico? And another thing I'll add to that, we have to remember, you want this team to stay healthy because, I'm sorry, I mean, you want um you, week one against New Mexico. I'm more concerned. It's a it's a, one of those things where there's two sides. So let me explain this my thought this way. Bryce Foster, you know, he was a little banged up. He, he Coach Fisher made it clear he thinks he's going to be good to go. But do you want a banged up Bryce Foster, you know, play against New Mexico and get further banged up and then have to have that, you know, play in the, the big Miami game that I think's one of the 
biggest games of the season. And, you know, if Foster gets more banged up and isn't feeling 100% in the Miami game, I'm not happy with that. So it's like you have to play him because you have to get those game snaps against another opponent to be ready to rock and roll. So you have to play Foster against New Mexico. But at the end of the day, it's like I don't love that he's going into that game banged up and then, you know, is he going to be 100% for the Miami game? I don't know. But it sounds like he's going to be fine. We're all good there. It's going to be okay, but it's definitely not my favorite situation in the world. Um, but, then, I mean, you got a ton of players here. Cronover, Jordan Moko, you got Finn Durstein, Chase Basantis, Mark Debu, Oki Ogjimbaye. I mean, you got a lot of players who can come in and help this offensive line. I mean, and that – is exciting to me because you don't you want an offensive line. We saw it last year. You lose some players. You have to bring in some young guys. I've heard positives about some of the young guys. I mean, some of the other young guys besides Basantis. I'll tell you this though: Chase Basantis is going to be a monster. How much he plays this year, I don't know. But I will confidently tell you that next season, if this isn't the year for him, next season, watch out for this young man, and he's going to be playing on Sundays. You can you can put that down, write it down. I feel confident saying that. Um. But, you know, I, I think this offensive line is at a position where all those players I listed that, you know, aren't the starters or in the two deep, I feel pretty good. And there's more names than that. Those are just the names that I'm kind of excited about in the two deep. I mean, there's a lot of players on this offensive line that can come in and help this team right now if something were to happen to one of these starters, which is exciting to me. That was a big problem for the Aggies last season. You lose Foster. You lose some of your offensive linemen. People don't play well. You have to bring in young guys. It's not a good situation to be in. That is why I'm, I'm I'm happy that you have depth of this position, which the Aggies just didn't have a mix, a good mix of veteran of veteran depth and young guys. Like Finn Durstein's a great example. Comes in from Boston College a few months ago. I mean, is he a guy that you're going to see on the field a ton? Probably not. But at the end of the day, he was a starter at Boston College before going down with an injury last season. Comes in and you know he can help you. He's an experienced offensive lineman that's played. Uh, college football before. So I, I, you, you have a lot of guys who have played snaps and can help you, which is a good thing for this Texas a offensive line. But I feel good about the starting five. I think they're in for a big season. And if something were to happen or somebody wasn't was to not really play well, you've got guys behind them that can come in and play offensive line at a high level, which is a great thing to say. Great thing to hear if you're a Texas A&M football fan. I'm going to tell you the starters on defense. I think there's a few surprises. We're going to talk about that coming up right here on Locked on Aggies. But first, I have got to talk about our friends over at Athletic Brewing. Athletic Brewing Company has completely changed the non-alcoholic beer game. They make non-alcoholic beers that actually taste good. Full flavor and well-crafted, just like a full-strength beer. They sent me a six-pack. Incredibly tasty. Absolutely loved it. Great product. You know, it's just something you got. I highly recommend it. You got to try it. Great stuff. They are constantly releasing limited edition experimental styles to add to their variety. Athletic Brewing Company amazing product. Like I said, you have got to go give it a chance. You can find Athletic Brewing Company's non-alcoholic brews at a store near you or buy online at athleticbrewing.com. First-time customers can use code LOCKEDON to get 15% off your first online order. That's code LOCKEDON at checkout for 15% off at athleticbrewing.com. Need beer? Exclusions and conditions apply. Athletic Brewing Company... Fit for all times. Great stuff, ladies and gentlemen. I highly recommend checking it out. Great brews, great stuff. Go give them a look. Let's talk about this defense. This defense is going to be, you know, it, it, it's going to be one of the best defenses in college football. And I feel confident saying that, you know, I. it's a position, uh, or, you know, it, it's a defense that, I've heard a lot of question marks around um, Coach Durkin, but I just I feel good about this unit. So let's run through it. Let's run through the defensive line. The guys that I think you're going to see run out there, Fadil Diggs, Shamar Turner, and then Walter Nolan and McKinley Jackson. Those are the guys I feel pretty confident you're going to see out there. 
Um, now it's going to be interesting. The, uh, you know, the scheme coach Durkin runs the, whatever scheme we see ran this year could be different to, to these, but those are the guys I feel good about. The, I, you know, Diggs can get after the quarterback, which is great. I think he's going to lead the team in sacks this season, but then you've got some sleepers getting after the quarterback and LT Overton, Malik Silla. You got some, um, yeah. Jay Arnold, like I said, friend of the show loves Malik Silla, long guy, long arms, great ability to get after the quarterback. Then you got Anai White, two fr true freshman DJ Hicks, Isaiah Rakes, Albert Regis. You've got so many Shamar Stewart. I mean, you got both of the Shamars. You got so much talent on this defensive line. You could this list could have gone longer. Uh, there's 17 and 100, 17,000 million more names could have gone on this list for this defensive line. It's a unit I feel good about, and I'm really anxious to see these guys get out there. And hopefully they're able to stop the run this season. That's going to be one of the bigger things. Now, I know the linebackers have to help with that, but you want to see these guys plug it up, stop the run, and I think you're going to see that this season. It'll be interesting to see how Coach Durkin is going to utilize this group, the kind of scheme they're going to run, how many guys are out there. All that's going to be interesting. So I'm anxious to see this group. And Walter Nolan, watch out. Watch out. Walter Nolan is in for a mondo, massive, gargantuan, giant, humongous season. And I cannot wait to see the numbers he puts up in his second year in College Station. It's going to be exciting and really cool to watch. Linebacker, this is a big, you know, linebacker and cornerback are the two positions, which we're obviously going to get into right here on Lockdown Aggies. But interesting positions, really interesting positions. Um, so your starters at linebacker, Edgerton Cooper and then Chris Russell Jr. Feel confident about that. Experienced guys, talented players. I like your guys there. Feel great about him. I like Martel Harris. I think he's developing well. Great player to have in your two deep. And then you, the freshman York and Juarte Davis, the transfer from Jackson State. I, it's plain and simple. I feel great about Cooper and Russell. I do. I think those are some of the better linebackers in the SEC, talented players. After that, this is the position where depth truly concerns me is the linebacker room. And we, and this is no secret. We've talked about this a ton here on locked on Aggies. It really does freak me out um, because you lose one of those guys. And then a guy's going to come in that just flat out isn't all that experienced. I mean, Davis is more experienced, but not at the sec level. How is playing at Jackson state going to transfer to playing in the sec? I just, I don't know how that's going to work out. So this linebacker room, if those guys were able to stay healthy and play good football, then I, it's not a concern for me, but we know how this is. It's SEC football. It's, you know, people get hurt. You're going to see people get hurt. You're going to see people not play well. And sometimes you have to replace a guy that's not playing well. And how much talent do you have? How much depth do you have? That's going to be one of the, my, my biggest concerns, honestly, for the season is, the, A, can this linebacker room stay healthy? And B, if it were to not stay healthy, can you have some guys come in and play relevant snaps and help you – win football games. That's going to be the biggest concern I have for this football team here is what can those guys do? Cornerback is another interesting position. Here's my surprise. Drum roll, drum roll. For those that have been listening to you everydayers that are here listening to the Locked on Aggies, this is going to be a monumental moment. Here are my starters at cornerback. It's changed. It has gone back and forth time and time again. We are now Monday of game week, and here are our starters. For me. Tariq Chappelle, Josh DeBerry. I know. I know. All you everydayers know that I love Tony Grimes. I love Sam McCall. And I've been impressed with what Javon Thomas has done so far. But I feel pretty good about what we're going to see from Josh DeBerry and Tariq Chappelle. I think everything we've seen from DeBerry in fall camp, all these positive reports, I think he's going to win this job. I think you're going to see him go out there first. And Javon Thomas, I, I think I think he gave it a heck of a run, but I just don't think he's going to get out there as a true freshman. It's it's exciting for the future that he's even in this conversation. But no, I don't think we're going to see him, you know, getting into the the the. I mean, I think he'll get snaps this season, but I don't think he's going to be like a every down kind of player. And then you know safety. So we're, I, I want to talk about just the, the defensive backfield as a whole because I think you've got a handful of players that can kind of float and, and do multiple things. So you got Tariq Chappelle and Justin Bray starting, and then Damani Richardson and Jarden Gilbert starting at your safety positions, and then Bryce Anderson at your nickel. I feel pretty good about that. Um, 
you know, I feel good about them. I feel good about that position as a whole. I mean, at, at, at the defensive backfield as a whole, the depth there at the at the uh, defensive backfield, your depth in the defensive backfield. Tony Grimes, Sam McCall, Javon Thomas, Deuce Harmon, Jacoby Matthews, Bobby Taylor, Dalton Brooks, and Jared Kerr. Of course, Thomas and Brooks are the true freshmen. Uh, Grimes, McCall, guys that have played some snaps. Everybody else has been around for a while. It, it, this is, you know, reading that out loud, you know, saying here are our starters in the defensive backfield and then being able to read those names. Grimes, McCall, Thomas, Harmon, Matthews, Taylor, Brooks, and Kerr. And then know that you've got all that talent if something were to happen to uh, to Chappelle, DeBerry, Richardson, Gilbert, or Anderson, you know you've got all those guys back there. That is is another thing that's excited me because it tells me that you have plenty of depth. If something were to happen to the starters, um, you know th that's depth is key. Depth is key in SEC football. You can't express it enough. It's why I talk about my excitement for having a backup quarterback in Max Johnson, who, frankly is good enough to start at a lot of schools. I, that's a good thing to have. We've seen time and time again, depth wins championships. It's football. It is football, y'all. And what happens is people go down. People get hurt. People don't play well. You have to have talented players behind them to go into football games. That's why um, I had an old baseball coach that talked about, um, you know, he, he would always joke and say, you know, I had – um, this is when I was playing in college, and he would say, I had a coach call me, ask about our team. I told him that we look good right now, but you know, it, it's 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 the it's you know, we're not it's it's the fall, not the spring. So how we're gonna look in a couple months, I don't know. And I think that's the same with football. I mean, you can pro project a team to be good, how good they're gonna be, but then at the end of the day, if things don't pan out, things don't pan out, and you just players get hurt. You're not as good as you thought you were going to be. And that's why I think this depth is such a big deal. Having a ton of depth is a big deal. And the Aggies have it. If someone were to go down, it's going to happen. It's football. You hate to say it. We've already lost Donovan Green for the year. You're going to see players go down with injuries. That is why all the names on this list I have here, all these people in the two deep, the three deep, these talented players that are going to be backups or not get a ton of snaps, you know, get the same amount of snaps as starters. It's a big deal because you have to have the depth. And the Aggies have it on both sides of the football, and that is exciting. We're going to talk about the special teamers and what this week is going to look like here on Locked on Aggies, as well as some exciting news coming up right here on Locked on Aggies. But now i got to give a shout-out to our friends over at Game Time. The Game Time app is awesome. Awesome. I just used it the other day to get tickets to a baseball game. They made it easy. I literally went and checked to be able to do this read here. I went and checked. I looked at some other sites to check for some last minute tickets, right? I always get last minute tickets. That's just how I rock and roll. Um, I checked some other sites and then I went to the game time app. Game time app was cheaper. It was easy to use right to my phone convenience is key with game time. And I absolutely love the convenience and the savings it brings you. I really highly recommend this app. It is incredible. It'll save you money on tickets and it just is easy to use, which is what I love. I'm not a big technology guy. I love easy to use stuff. The game time app is easy to use. Snag the tickets without the stress with game time. Download the game time app. Create an account and use code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE for $20 off. Download game time today. Last-minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Let's talk a little special teams, a little special teams, because I think it's a big deal. And we don't talk about it a lot here on Locked on Aggies, but it's game week, so let's just rock and roll with a little special teams, okay? You know your kicker. You know who's kicking for the Aggies. We know old Randy's going to be back out there again. He was 13 for 17 last year. Feel good about that. You want to have a kicker who you feel confident can go out there and just knock them through the uprights. I've, I've talked about Nick Constantino, the punter, and, and what he means for this team. You know, having, having a having a – kicker and having a punter 
that can help you win football games is a big stinking deal. Do you know how many times yesterday I was watching the opening games, or on Saturday, excuse me, the uh, Vandy-Hawaii game and the Navy-Notre Dame game? Do you know how many punts I saw shanked? Too many. The Aggies have a great kicker in Nick Constantino and have a a punter in Nick Constantino and a dang good uh, kicker in old Randy. And that's a big deal. You have to have it. You have to have it to win football games. I feel good about the special teams unit. You have solid returners. Kick returners is the bigger question mark. I feel pretty confident in the ice is going to be bringing punts back. Um, Coach Fisher, during his press conferences, has talked about a handful of guys that might return kicks. So we'll kind of see how that pans out. But you have a special team unit that's going to help you win football games, and that excites me. It's something you have to have. Um, it's it's something you have to have to be able to win a game, and I like that. I like the ability that to have this talented room of special teamers. The Aggies have it. That's going to help win football games this season. I'm looking forward to it. That's who I think is going to start. Let me know in the comments, ladies and gentlemen. Let me know in the YouTube comments if you're listening on Spotify or a, or Apple Podcast, a different plat- a podcast platform. Head on over to YouTube. Do you disagree with me on any starters? Do you disagree with me with the cornerback room? Let me know. Let me know who you think is going to start. I appreciate it. Like I said, these are my opinions. Are these guys all going to start? I don't know. We're going to see. These are the guys that I think we're going to see out there. But at the end of the day, I just, I, I you know, I, I'm, I'm giving you my two cents. You give me yours in the comments, and I appreciate that. Also, subscribe on YouTube. That it helps the channel a ton. Subscribe and like. It helps me out a ton. It helps the channel out a ton. That would mean a lot to me if you could go and subscribe to the YouTube. I really appreciate that. What is this week going to look like, ladies and gentlemen, here on Locked on Aggies? It's going to be a fun one. It is game week. Have I said that yet? Yes, a whole bunch of times because I am excited. Game week. The Aggies are taking on New Mexico. I can't wait. We got a game on Saturday. Goodness, it's a good time to be an Aggie fan. Um, So this week, we're going to have on a friend that covers New Mexico to talk about the team, tell us who we need to be concerned about, what do the Aggies need to do to win the game. That is going to be coming up on Thursday's episode on Locked on Aggies. Normally on a Monday in a game week, I'm going to be recapping the previous game, but of course, not a previous game, so we're kind of running through some starters. Um, but w- the more we get into the week, we'll, we'll kind of get the flow. Uh, we get into the season, we'll get the flow of what the season's going to look like. And I just can't wait to bring you all a ton of awesome Texas A&M content during the football season, basketball season, baseball season. I'm really looking forward to it. I couldn't not this wouldn't be possible without you every day or tuning in and listening. Thank you so much to everybody who watches me. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. I really do. Last thing before I sign off, it is game week. I had to say it one more time. I'm sorry. (laughs) That is going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Aggies. Have an absolutely amazing rest of your Monday, which I know you will because the Aggies play football this week, and we will see you tomorrow.